Okay, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for having me present to you today. So I'll be talking about biosecurity, you know, our key to African, African swine fever prevention. Okay, so siguro tanong natin, uh, ASF has been here in the Philippines for almost more than a year. No, and the question natin is, where are we now after one year? No, unfortunately, if you look at the latest map from BAE, uh, the latest latest ASF uh, zoning status, you've seen that ASF has actually spread to almost all parts of the zone. No? We have only a few areas in Ilocos Norte and in some Ilocos Sur area that have maintained its ASF-free status. No. But it has slowly spread, and it's now lately has been spreading in in Batangas, Laguna, in in the Bicol areas, no, and 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 unfortunately, you no, know, we're we're still trying to figure out ano ba magagawa pa natin to prevent this spread, you no. Know? If you look at the population that we have lost, no, we we've, we've tried the industry has tried to come up with estimates, no, on how much have been lost already to ASF, and these are figures that you can see here. These are pre-ASF estimates on, on population swine population in the Philippines. It was pegged at mga 14.7 uh, million, no, uh, heads of pigs uh, that we had pre-ASF. Estimates last July, you know, this still July, that we apparently lost already 25% of our population, you no, know, 25%. And and we've been discussing lately, you no, know, this September, October, um, figures might have increased already to about high 30s to 40%. And if we don't stop it, we'll probably see uh, it's not going to be uh, a surprise if we lose more than half of our population due to ASF. Okay, because it continues to uh, hit many areas in the country. You know, in Mindanao, in, in some parts of North Luzon, it, it, it's now ravaging the South Luzon provinces. No? Visayas is actually being very strong in uh, being able to prevent ASF entry. Okay, and because of that, no, we've seen that if we're going to lose that much number of animals in, in our industry, magkakaroon tayo ng shortfall in pork production in the future. And that's why the Department of Agriculture has actually been encouraging some people who might have hit been hit with ASF or are planning to go back to the pig industry so that we'll be able to face that shortfall in pork production. So the, the Department of Agriculture has been no, gave, gave the go signal for those who might have the knowledge or you no know, the the skill to repopulate to go back to pig industry. Because we need that pork. We need that pork. Filipinos love our pork. We love our lechon. We love our adobo. So, sigurado we will be needing that, and we have to have a very strong industry to support that requirement. But uh, the, we've heard that there are some farms who actually tried to restock no, or tried to use pigs that uh, was left in their farms and try, tried to operate again, but they apparently got hit with ASF. Ulit, no? So a recurrence of ASF in the same farm. Now the question is, is it because of downtime? Nagmadali ba silang bumalik? Or did they clean the property very well, the farm, the, the contamination issue? Or is it Maybe magtagal ng downtime, baka anin mo buwan na, and they've done all the, the cleaning, the, they use all the right disinfectants, but they might not have uh, upgraded their biosecurity. Na after a while, you start clean again, but kung paano siya pumasok, how it entered your the farm in the first place, continue to happen because maybe the upgrade in the biosecurity was not done. And basically, sabi nga natin, eh, ano ba yung risk of getting ASF right now? No, After one year, I sit higher or lower by risk of getting ASF. This is one of the slides we've been presenting no, to the industry in 2018 when we start hearing na ASF uh, hit China no, in 2018. And we we're telling them these are the, the ways that uh, ASF can get to the Philippines. No? Sabi nga, we're an island. It has to be brought in some uh, by someone or by something into the Philippines. So we were looking at, at this one, trying to control the ports. Unfortunately, it just came here, so kumalat. So the focus shifted na on how to prevent it from coming into your ASF-free areas, no? for example, in, in Visayas. No, still, if we're looking at air, airports there, it's going to be the same in trying to prevent it from going to the Visayas areas or the ASF-free areas. Ang ngayon lang, because it's already local, 
you have to look at bus buses coming in, people coming in, workers going back. It's it's no different like COVID, no. That you're also looking at these people that might be bringing in the virus back, or that they they actually in not intentionally bringing, but they don't know that it's a risk. Port products entry, ships are still coming in. We still have ports. We still have international possible international sources of viruses. So yun ang kailangan natin in terms of how to control it from getting to the ASF free country. So it just becomes more localized. And of course, you online markets, which I'll show you later now how easy it is to get a port that might be contaminated with ASF. No? So I'm focusing on since ASF is here, dapat mag upgrade din tayo ng ating biosecurity on the farm because it's it's there. Before, many farms were saying, and then as a China, it's a China problem. Now it's a Philippine problem. It's around you. So now you have to make sure that you try to look at how you're working on your biosecurity because it can be brought in by many of these your workers, cats and dogs going around, garbage, no yung sa sabi nga itong online supply no I was looking at uh, Lazada and Shopee and marketplace no and, and if you want to get longanisa these are semi processed no so these are not uh, fully cooked you can actually get it no from delivered to your home to your farm no uh, and and I don't know no I hope they also pass a certain level of controls on on it's slaughtered properly the animals used for these products are slaughtered uh, uh, properly has the NMIS stick, but we don't know. But as I said, it's easier now to get access to to products that might have uh, some risk when, when it comes uh, near your homes or your farms. So one thing we always say is biosecurity works. No? Uh, and, and, and I know that there are going to be a lot of people, no? uh, especially those who got hit in, in Luzon or even in Mindanao no? saying, Angel, you know, I, I'm having second thoughts on biosecurity, but unfortunately, well, fortunately, biosecurity works, and we have to look at those people who actually made it work. Now, for example, in China, there are a lot of farms there, even though kalat na kalat na ASF don. There were still some farms who have kept them their farms free from ASF ever since 2018. A lot of farms, and and when you look at it, there's nothing special on the animals on the feed or on, on what they use is just basically they practice good biosecurity. The same in Vietnam, uh, where in if you look at the history of the uh, ASF in Vietnam, lahat ng solok na ng Vietnam may ASF tinamaan yung farm. But this partner farms, green feed swine farms, which is actually uh, ang, ang animal health manager dito is a Filipina no, who works there. He is the one, she was the one who's actually working, making sure that uh, biosecurity is being done. No, she 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 just said, no, Doc Angel, that's what I do. See, Doctor De Macali, no, she used to work here. Then he was she was asked to to help out in this operation in Vietnam, and she was really on focusing on just making sure that the biosecurity practice are solid in their farms. And nagkakwento nga siya na actually yung farm niya isa sa mga farm niya kapit bahay niya meron kitang kita nila yung mga sinoslaughter na animals or nililibing. No, they were burying animals very near their operations but they practice good biosecurity and it didn't jump to their farm kahit na very short distance lang yung layo ng kabilang farm so biosecurity really works and we have to look at this sample uh, examples from people who've actually made it to work okay even in the philippines you you sabi nga we've lost 90 95% of animals in bulacan and dapat tanungin natin anong nangyari sa 5% no did they do something different did they do something you know so i talked to those uh, technical managers there the mga general managers saying that you know they they just really focus also on biosecurity so what we really have to do is really review uh, farm biosecurity check ano ba magagawa natin kasi minsan we might be looking at biosecurity as just you know downtime not allowing people to come to your farm asking people who visit your farm na kung pwede Monday ka pupunta dito para first first day of the week wala ka pang pinanggalingan farm or you, you let them shower in you give them farm clothes no you give them sanitizers like covid no yung so ginagawa natin but you might be missing out on some things that are also good solid biosecurity practices like basic rodent and pest control no so yung daga no if ay ah, do ko konti lang daga pag sinabing ko konti daga sabihin ko konti nakikita mo but 
there could be a lot of uh, rats coming out in the evening na maaring galing sa mga areas that might be bringing in the virus into your farm. Stray animals, dogs, cats, no, you, you check that. So everything we have to review farm biosecurity. And, and biosecurity, sabi nga, hindi naman siya bago in terms of discussions. No? This has been talked about. Maybe for those who've been in school or those in VSU who's actually studying uh, pathology or epidemiology, they'll be talking about biosecurity on how diseases move. And if you know how diseases move, then you might have an idea how to prevent it. And same as going to the farm, you have to just to look at ano ba yung what's going in and what's going out of your farm because these are where movement happens and where viruses might, you know, uh, might also come in like air, water, feed, you know, people coming in, your supplies, you know, when you deliver your feed, equipment, as I mentioned, pests. You know. So these are just still the same thing we're looking at in preventing any disease, not just ASF. So you just have to make sure you work on that one. Still, as I said, focus areas will be the same. We might in the in PIC, we might try to re repackage it para just to make it more interesting. But basically what we're talking about are basic biosecurity procedures and focus areas that we just have to put more effort in, especially now with ASF in. Unlike before, some diseases we can manage with uh, antibiotics, we can manage with vaccines. But in ASF, it's when it gets into your farm, then very difficult already to you know, to survive if you have ASF coming in. So first thing you have to work at uh, that focus area is basically location. You might be saying, hey, location, I have limited uh, uh, now on location because the farm is existing. And you're right. No, uh, I guess location would also involve on trying to come up with a clean and dirty area in your farm or sinasabing nila ayon lang sabihin dirty area it's more of clean and restricted area meron kang compound meron kang gates meron kang fences just to prevent you know uh, outside you know, just just to have a barrier from the outside okay and if you're going to look at disease control sabi nga because of location you know of course the farther you are the better no, for short distances, these are the things you might uh, be able to prevent. If medyo malayo-layo ng konti lang yung mga farm, maybe sa mga oh, kilometer away, 500 meters away lang yung farm, then you can maybe prevent ABP, pasturella, hemophilus, which are usually the bacterial uh, diseases, streptococcus. Now, in some intermediate, mga 3 kilometers and layo, then maybe if kung ganong kalayo yung farm nyo sa another farm or another facility that has pigs, then you might be able to prevent, if wala pa kayong mycoplasma, then you might be able to prevent that. Influenza, uh, PRRS in some cases, no, but PRRS can known also to look, no, because I read this from Managing Pig Health. No, it's one of our textbook in the university. PRCV, and for relatively long distances, 9 kilometers, 10 kilometers, PRB, FMD, they were saying that they can actually, based on the book, it can be spread. Although in some uh, later, well, in some things we know that PRS can also be transferred. How about ASF? No, ASF is not one of those viruses. No, sabi nga yun sa una puro bacterial yung shorter. But ASF is also not one of those uh, diseases or pathogens that are known to be spread, no, uh, far by wind. No, so the same one uh, sinasabi nga nila that have short spread are TGE, PED. Uh, parvo, uh, swine vesicular disease, and hog cholera. So, hindi siya known to travel farther like your should rabies or your PRRS. So, short short distances. And this is good to know because if you know that, then the farther you are from facilities or other farms, the bigger the chance that you might you you, you can prevent ASF. And maybe that's because one ASF is one of the large, uh, very large virus no, compared to PRRS no or FMD no um, ASF no uh, is tao ko nga dito it's it's actually the dark the death star <laughs> no because it's a very big big virus about 250 nanometers no and that could help na uh, bakit hindi siya ganong kalayo na nadadala no they've seen it transfer from pen to pen by aerosol but in short distances and in confined areas they haven't really proven that it's actually being spread long distances via air. Okay. 
facility, sabi nga, location, compound definitions, barn perimeter, we're discussing later. No? So this is just an example of a farm that, that would actually have a very specific parent definition of areas, where in the first one is your, this is your dirty area, which is basically the main road. No, yan yung main road, yan yung common, common uses with other people and, and you know, other facilities, other trucks, uh, vehicles. So that's going to be the dirty area, nasa labas yan ng farm. Then you might have the low security area, which is means this is what they consider after ka makapasok dun sa gate. Then you have some area wherein people can still come from the outside. No, they might change, they might do some initial uh, decontamination or 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 uh, washing, no, but this after a gate before they come into basically the main farm. But the thing sa main farm, they take a shower, go into the office, and tawag na doon medium security areas. No, so ito yung pagpapasok, maybe border nun is basically your feed mill or where you come into the office, they're considered medium security areas or your dormitories. Then you might, you will have the high security areas wherein the pigs are. So ganun na yung ang, ang, ano, hindi lang dati na pinaga clean and dirty. No? It's basically, um, you know, ang dirty mo talaga sa labas. Di sa loob is actually uh, several level of clean areas. No? Hindi na siya clean and dirty. Pest control, as I said, we were discussing that this is actually one of the things you really want to do. No? This is actually a picture of bird, bird control, no? bird proofing. And ito yung nakikita namin na possible reasons why why it could be that ASF talagang lumilipat no from farm to farm. We feel na bakit ba no uh, based on as I said ganina based on literature or on science or ganyan. How come it actually seems like it's going farther away? And one of the thinking was maybe kung galing siya sa sa land sa areas where pigs are buried or you know. Uh, there are infections of ASF, then they might carry uh, the virus on their, on their feet or in their legs. So there is actually an advantage of having uh, bird proofing. We, we've shown that it's actually the same with PED before, that actually the virus was carried by birds you know, from one farm to the other. You know? So it, it, we feel it's the same with, with ASF. I think that's going to be a very good uh, thesis studies for those vet students. You might want to do some swabbing of uh, captured birds in the area. Of course, rats you know, try to have good fencing uh, to prevent dogs and cats from coming in. Double fencing would be the, the best, but uh, you know, animals or pests can actually bring in diseases into their farm. Okay. It can bring in a lot of diseases. Bird can bring in TGE, PED, PRS, flies. No, sabi nga, flies. Sabi nga, it it might it does not carry ASF. It's not known to carry ASF, but I'm, we were discussing because there were uh, one of our uh, vet colleagues. No, actually did some testing of flies in the in, in a farm. No, nakita nila na positive yung yung fly with ASF. So it's possible na if kung madaming lango doon, pumunta siya doon sa kung saan merong ASF virus and it's very near to other healthy animals, they can, then flies can actually help transport the virus. But of course, you know, whether how much they far they, it can uh, go in, go bring the virus, it's still, again, more studies would be needed to do that. Okay, But uh, based on literature on parasitology, flies can uh, can go as, as high to three kilometers. But uh, as I said, whether it's really the main source of ASF uh, has to be studied further. Of course, daga, same. So yung kailangan talaga natin is basically look at your farms and try to see ano ba yung mga risk areas in your, uh, around your vicinity of your farm. Okay, meron bang katayan? There's there a slaughterhouse? Is there another farm? Is there a national road? Is there a selling facility? Then at least if you know where the possible risks are or where the possible sources of uh, virus is, then you can come up with controls to minimize the risk of getting it uh, back. No? Another is people. No? Uh, and we've been talking about this in, in, in big farms, but even in smaller farms, no, in our small holders or what we used to call backyard farmers, no, they, they should also practice a certain level of bicycle with people. No, sometimes what happens with small holders is, is 
pupunta ka, kita mo, tingnan mo yung baboy ko, may binebenta akong baboy. Or, because you're so proud of your pigs, no, they're growing very well, no, people come in and look, you know, gusto mo ba makakita ng baboy? No? So, this has to stop. Because you don't know that these people, unintentionally, might have been into a market sa palengke, or might have gone to another farm, or visited another facility, maybe a livestock market, and went to your farm, and maybe unintentionally, he, he or they, bring in the virus into your farm. So visitors should be kept as at a very minimum. If they don't need anything or hindi siya essential dun sa farm, then then they should not be in your farm. No, yung production staff nyo, make sure that you know the people working in your farms know also about biosecurity. They should have a, a common understanding what biosecurity is. Okay? Maintenance, yung pupunta doon, yung mag-aayos, yung mga electrician or yung mga mag-aayos ng ating mga pumps or repair people, then they should also be following by security by doing either downtime, they cannot go from one farm direct to your farm or going to the palengke or to the markets, going to your farm. They have to do a downtime and they should be provided uniforms and if they work inside, they should also be provided food para at least alam mo that the, the source of the food they're eating inside are clean. You, know, you, you should control it and all the supplies should be done. Only essential, downtime, uh, as I mentioned, no? so kung talagang, talagang kailangan lang, no? uh, sala, saka lang siya pwedeng pumasok, especially yung ating mga buyers. They should trust you na I'll bring it out. I'll, I'll, if I tell you it's going to be 100 kilos or good pigs, trust me. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it out. No? Kasi minsan yung mga bihero, gusto nila makita, can I see your pigs, pipili ako, then that we feel based on some studies we've done or some surveys that uh, our colleagues has done in Bulacan, this is actually one of the possible, the highest possible reason why ASF was transferred from farm to farm because of buyers going into the farms, their, their vehicles going to the farms as well. So entrance process would be the same, you no? Know? So you have to have a certain level of biosecurity, you no? Know? So yung mga chinelas, mga sapatos should not be brought into your farm or where the pigs are, you no? Know? Leave them out. Bigyan niyo ng chinelas if you're if you're a small hold farm, you no? Know? Give them uh, a certain footwear when they want to go in. Provide them coveralls if possible, make uh, let them take a shower because you don't know where, where they've been. No? Uh, and, and these are just examples on the entrance processes in different farms. No? They, they're, they're asked to take a shower, no? which is sometimes uh, difficult for other people because they feel that, oh, yung baboy, eh, baboy yan yan, eh, madumi yan, eh, ba ito papasok? Maybe it's because of disease control. And we have to change that, that, that mindset that you're going to a dirty operation. It's basically you're going into a clean operation and that's the reason why you have to to practice some level of biosecurity by changing clothes and taking a shower and changing footwear. Okay, so sabi nga, layers of protection, like in Senate, there should be layers of protection from dirty, from the road, going to the uh, low security area, may vehicle disinfection, may foot bath, may hand washes, from lower security, meron kang downtime requirement, change of clothes, do shower, then, kung nandun ka na, kahit nandun ka na sa medium security, if you want to go to the where the pigs are, then you have to get another uniform and do shower. So, we want to have layers and layers of protection para it will be harder for the virus to be taken from the dirty area going into your into your pigs. Okay? So, this is an example ng small hold. Baka kasi, Ben, ay pang malaking farm naman, Doc Angel, yung, ano, eh, yung mga tinuturo nyo. That is still the same with, with small hold farmers. No? You want to have your farm, if you're a small scale farm, you also want to have a definition on where people can also approach. So, kung meron kang area na lagyan mo ng fencing, of course, sometimes you will not be able to come up with your solid fences because, Doc, I'm just a small farm. Maglalagay pa ba ako yung bahay ko nga? Eh, walang, walang, walang simento. Ito pang sa babu yan. So just make sure, okay, lagay ka ng barbed wire o lagay ka ng demarcation where people should not be able to get in. And like this one, kita mo, kahoy lang siya, may foot, may foot bath, may foot uh, sanitation area. Make them, give them washer, give them a place to wash or disinfect. Parang COVID, no? Parang sa COVID yan. Kung meron siya madidisinfect niya, makapaghuga siya, palit siya ng chinelas or boots. And 
give them some some change of clothing, whether it's a cover or all. No? So even if you're a small scale farm, you can still do biosecurity. Food, again, we do not recommend or you should not allow people to bring in food into your pig area because you never know what's in the 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 in the ones they carry the yung sandwich nila, yung bao nila, no kung doon sila kakain, you don't know what's what's inside. No kahit sabi mo na ah siguro naman alam na nila, no they might not know that they're bringing in some viruses into your farm. So no outside pork pork products are allowed into farms or in general no food should be brought in where the pigs are. And in bigger farms even the vegetables kasi nga akala natin uy pork lang yung problema. But if you buy your vegetables in the market, nakapunta naman kayo sa palengke, isang lamesa lang yun, nandito yung karne ng baboy, nandito yung vegetables, no? and they might be contaminated as well. So you might want to do some uh, sanitation or sterilization of your vegetables using either citric acid, uh, acid wash, 2%, or ozone. No? These are known to be good uh, ways to sterilize your or to sanitize vegetables and other meats. Okay? Live pigs and semen, of course, uh, if you're if you're a farm, you you be needing, of course, animals or you will be getting replacement. You'll be needing semen. You just have to make sure that your partner supplier or genetic supplier is ASF free. No, because baka ako hirap na hirap ka to keep your farm ASF free, but you'll be getting animals from different sources because of prices. Then isang malilang, isang gusto lang magbenta ng kanyang baboy because uh, nagkakandamate na iba or somebody was selling cheap uh, breeders or cheap uh, animals or piglets hindi mo pala alam it's coming from ASF areas no so you have to make sure that when you run an operation work with your partners and partners are also your suppliers or your suppliers are also your partners no so talk to them oh, ano ba yung maasahan do you do your ASF testing how can you help us prevent ASF from coming from coming into our farm. And if ever, dahil hindi mo rin masasabi, even if your supplier is ASF free, it has to travel for some time. You don't know what you know what it can pick up during the transport, no? Yung sa highway, sa SLEX or sa Roro or whatever. It, it's always good if you're if you have a farm that you have an isolation facility that, that's farther away from where your main herd is. Kasi diseases can be picked up on transport. No? So ang gusto mo doon, ilagay mo siya doon, uh, let it stay for one to two months, two months preferably, because usually in a span of two months, kung meron man siya na pick up na disease that would be a, uh, a danger to your main herd, usually it will come out. Or through testing, you'll be able to determine whether meron sila nakuha na, na sakit. And that will be the same with ASF. So minimum 30 days, uh, better uh, two months. Same with semen delivery. Of course, you cannot do isolation semen delivery. This one, you really have to work with your, your semen suppliers or your genetic company, okay? Because semen can also bring in ASF you know, if the boars are positive. You no, know, one of our, again, one of our colleagues who's been doing a lot of testing has seen that he has found ASF in semen. And and you know uh, that's why one of the directions you know get get uh, re, re, uh, depopulate and possibly repopulate some boar studs if they find out that may ASF sha because it can be so ASF can can be found in the semen as well equipment all equipment if possible walang hirama na equipment no and any new equipment coming into your farm should be decontaminated properly using uv using ozone using sanitizers in some farms they don't allow phones to come in no? but uh minsan sa pilipino kasi ngayon or i think globally uh, taking away somebody's phone parang death sentence siya, no? so what you want to do is if if they really have to bring it no uh, i would prefer them not to but you might want to punasan yun siya ng uh, well uh, alcohol or something that could actually decontaminate because you it yung hands you know you where they place it, it this could actually carry in uh, pathogens into your farm okay and feed no uh, they've been looking at feed as possible sources or source of ASF no and, and this has been this one I think well uh, this actually a chart that they were trying to simulate, no, simulate 
kano uh, katagal yung ASF? How long does that ASF survive in different ingredients like soybean, uh, soybean oil, or uh, cat food, dog food, sausages? And they've been saying that you know ASF can actually survive in some uh, ingredients, and that's why in some some countries, no, well even in the Philippines, we are actually recommending that there might be a need. There could be a very high or big need to do put mitigants, no, just to make sure you decontaminate any possible contamination or ASF that could find its way to your feeds, no. So your ingredients, you know, how it's being manufactured, then delivery, no. It, it doc, malinis yung ayon supply. Uh, naglagay ako ng mitigation, pero ang problema in delivery. Uh, if you look at how it's being delivered, sometimes, no, in your truck. Eh, minsan nangyayari doon sa sako, no? uh, maganda maganda yung process no, ng paggawa ng feed, uh, very hygienic sa sako nila. Pero yung mga nagbubuhat ng sako papunta sa truck at yung magbubuhat ng sako from your truck papunta sa farm, hindi mo alam kung saan sila galing. So that's why one of the recommendations also for, for disease control is, if possible, don't bring in feed sacks from outside going into your farm. So transfer nyo siya sa ibang container so that you you actually again as i said put layers from outside going into your farm okay so feed biosecurity is also something that has to be done and we can talk about it in another venue but even in manufacturer feed they also look at biosecurity on how people move on on clean and dirty areas in the feed mill in our case in the farm one one thing you can do is actually no kasi ganti nakikita natin pag feed delivery ito yung feed mill no, they go to a farm, nagdi deliver sila, punta sa farm mo, or maybe may meron silang customer na na small farm, another farm, but you never know what they're bringing in bet in between the farms and the feed mill, the feed mill to the farm. So again, talking about layering, you might want to come out first. Maybe you want to have your own uh, truck. No, if you're a big farm, baka mas maganda ikaw na yung sumundo sa, sa feed mo sa feed mill, at least you control where your truck goes, no? if you can afford it. Okay? As I mentioned, feed bags. So this is what I said earlier, no? because the feed bags, ito, actually, this is actually a picture of uh, rice, no? but basically the same same as uh, pagbubuhat din ng feeds. No? People step on it, no? carry it, they hold it, so you don't know whether they're they're actually contaminating the feed bags outside. And that's the reason why we are, even be, with the PED cases, uh, years back, we were saying that don't bring in feed bags to your farm. Okay, Swill feeding. Actually, there's always discussions on this. Sabi nga, masama ba talaga yung swill feeding? If yung longonisa or whatever, pinaglinisan or yung raw, kasi lahat naman may tapong galing sa kitchen, it all goes to kanin baboy. No, and, and it's possible, if pakain mo yung kanin baboy sa, sa farm mo and meron siyang AS, ASF virus, doon mo papakain sa baboy, then they can get ASF. Although sabi nila, you can cook it. But sometimes ako, I would say, I'd rather say, let's not feed swill. Because can you imagine kung small farmer ka, you have you have one sow, you have uh, ten ten fatteners. Hindi ka nga makapagluto na maayos sa farm mo. Yung ba tira tira mo, ipakukuloan mo ba siya ng one hour, 30 minutes to one hour? Kung ikaw nga, hirap ka na maghanap ng gas, tapos papakain mo. How, how, how can we be sure that it does not happen? No? So ang sinasabi lang, if we can avoid swill or sabihin natin don't feed swill at all. Or if really na, if really yun talagang source, then maybe we can centralize the processing of swill tapos yun na lang pamimigay natin sa small, small farmers because it has been uh, well one of the discussions what this is one of the fastest way of really trans, uh, transporting because the virus kahit dumating siya sa Pilipinas it has to go to the food chain of the pigs and this is the the one that actually can bring it to the food chain of your pigs transport the same lahat ng transport whether it's feed people, uh, pigs, no, they could actually bring in. So make sure that you have a good loadout facility. Don't let the trucks go directly to your farm. No, If ever you have to do uh, good uh, vehicle decontamination processes, so you do that. Truck wash, make sure that you clean it. No, Sabi nga, lilinisin nyo siya. 
uh, disinfect. Ito, actually, nililinis niya yung mga matting ng uh, cab inside where the driver steps on. Because usually, na nakakalimutan natin, ang linis-linis ng truck. Pero yung laman nung sa driver, hindi naman natin nililinis. Yung palang driver, bababa dun sa farm nyo. Then, that could actually be the one. That's, he could be the one bringing in the virus into your farm. Of course, washing. We have to remember sometimes, no, uh, or may, maybe more times, is yung linis ng iba might not be the same as yung gusto nating linis. Like this one. Sabi nila malinis na yan, but when we inspected and you do flashlight, makikita mo marami pa rin manure doon sa mga singit-singit. And they feel na, uy, masyado namang uh, ma mabusisi uh, or masyadong... Uh, thorough ang gustong clean it. Because we need to be thorough because if this is actually manure that might have ASF, now it looks uh, harmless, but when pigs are there, it gets wet, then it, it sloughs off and the pigs get to eat it or it, it stays in the farm, then the pigs can get ASF. And of course, same with cleaning. Baka mamaya may downtime ka, pero yung mga downtime ng truck mo, nasa tabi rin yung nililinis sa mga truck. So you're, this, this truck is clean but it's waiting on the side of some uh, another truck that being cleaned as well, then you might just be decontaminating or contaminating that farm or that 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 truck. No? So you have to make sure that it has to be in a certain areas. Same with viajeros. No? So, hindi naman sa, you know, picking on viajeros, but we feel that because they're the ones really buying pigs and, and coincidentally, where, where there are a lot of uh, pickup of animals, that's usually where... ASF starts. No? So, kung makikita mo yung biyahero, they go to the market, they go to the farm, they go back to the market, or they go to your farm, they go to the slaughterhouse, they go to your farm, baka may pipick up na ibang baboy, or vice versa, meron pumunta na ibang farm, pipick up ng baboy sa nyo, then you don't know whether viruses are being transported by the buyers no? from one area to the other. So, again, talking about layering, no? maybe try to put a layer that if you can decide if there's an area wherein you know you can put a transfer station and from your farm to that transfer station you of, you you own that truck you control that truck yung mga biyahero goes to the transfer station so you keep them away from your farm so that's one way of you know preventing uh preventing asf to to transfer okay mortality removal you no know, make sure that you you have very good burial grounds you do no, na hindi nakakalat, uh, kung saan saan, make sure either you do uh, burial or composting, but make sure that it's uh, isolated, properly covered, and you know, the, it doesn't actually attract other uh, pests and parasites. Okay. Burial sites, basically, ang um, pinaka-preferred disposal sana of uh, ASF is by incineration. But of course, because of the Clean Air Act, we cannot do it. So the more common practice now is burial. But you know, you have to make sure you you consider some things to minimize the spread. You know, like for example, uh, there's a possibility na magkaroon ng leaching of the virus or the body fluids na pag nag-decompose yung mga uh, baboy, yung mga dead pigs, that it leaches and it actually can might reach your water table and, de de cont and contaminate your water source no so ang target sana natin when you bury meron ka ng uh, a layer of maybe lime no or meron kang cover then you that's the time you put your pigs so para if they start decomposing then th this this fluids or this liquid liquefaction would pass through the the lime and hopefully the sanitizer no ma check natin of course, you want it also farther away from your farm or if possible, very, very far away from your water sources. Sabi nga, minimum sana of 33 meters, 30 meters away from your drinking level, uh, your, your pumps. No? Kasi sinasabi na, there's a possibility that it can actually contaminate the groundwater. Yeah. So, ang target mo is if you have to do burial, hanapan mo ng area na malayo dun sa, sa farm or malayo dun sa pinagkukuha na mo ng tubig. Okay. Then, kung di ka sigurado, then there are a lot of uh, water, water sanitation options like chlorination, uh, using ozone, chlorine dioxide, hydrogen peroxide. There are a lot of products that we can use and it, it might be becoming more necessary because of since ASF is here and if you're in an area wherein you don't know where they threw or what the, what the status of your water source is, no, baka mag-test ka ngayon, but if the contamination comes later, 
you might want to make to you want might to put in place a good water sanitation system. Okay. The same, uh, making sure that the carcasses, burial sites are covered. No, uh, wala na kalabas. Put put line on top. No, uh, just to make sure that you know if ever ngayon tagulan ngayon bumabaha siya. Uh, so that just in case it floods, you're hoping that, you know, if there's a layer of lime there, that it, it can actually help in killing the virus when it comes out. Okay, fence off, you know, uh, try to use different uh, burial sites and, and making sure that people know that this is our off-limit areas. Of course, this is something that's part of biosecurity that we teach a lot of farms. If you have ASF, then you have to say, Magkaroon kayo ng stop, you do your testing, check for clinical signs, uh, try to confirm the ASF status, and do not spread the, the virus no, uh, by, you know, by selling it or disposing it quickly because you, know, you, ha you have a responsibility also to other farms. Okay? Manure management, the same. Uh, make sure that you manage properly the removal, uh, uh, the, the transport of your of your manure outside the farm okay so that's basically biosecurity thank you very much for listening and and you know we can we i could talk hours on biosecurity focusing on different areas but please make sure at least understand that other farms are able to keep asf free by just practicing good biosecurity and i'm sure if you do biosecurity we can also do this so thank you and let's if you have a, other questions uh, we can take that now thank you very much today with thousands of dedicated colleagues reaching out to customers around the world zoetis brings a singular focus on animal health to the quality products services and solutions it offers veterinarians and livestock farmers because the world depends on animals those who care for them can depend on us. We're Zoetis, for animals, for health, for you. Today, with thousands of dedicated colleagues reaching out to customers around the world, Zoetis brings a singular focus on animal health to the quality products, services, and solutions it offers veterinarians and livestock farmers. Because the world depends on animals, those who care for them can depend on us. We're Zoetis, for animals, for health, for you. Today, with thousands of dedicated colleagues reaching out to customers around the world, Zoetis brings a singular focus on animal health to the quality products, services, and solutions it offers veterinarians and livestock farmers. Because the world depends on animals, 
those who care for them can depend on us. We're Zoetis, for animals, for health, for you. Tonicity PX is the first isotonic protein drink for pigs. Made from all natural ingredients, Tonicity PX is scientifically proven to help your pigs thrive. Use on pigs from two days old to provide early hydration and nutrients, reduce pre-weaning mortality, and help pigs cope with stress. The convenient powder formula comes in 11 pound resealable bags and fits in easily to your existing pig management system. Simply mix one scoop of PX powder to one gallon of water and give one pint per litter per day. Your pigs will love the taste. Tenicity PX, a healthy start for your pigs. Smart business for you. Visit tenicity.com for details. Matagal ba ang paggaling ng sugat ng inyong mga alagang baboy? Ang Topicure ay isang natural wound spray na mabilis na nagpapagaling ng mga sugat ng baboy. Ito ay mayroong pinus oil, eucalyptus oil at citrus deodara na nagsisilbing anti-maggot, fly repellent at anti-microbial sa sugat. Higit sa lahat, ito ay may curcumin oil o luyang dilaw na mabisang solusyon sa pamamaga ng sugat ng baboy. Topicure The Natural Wound Spray Para sa malusog at mahusay na paghahayupan Pork Champ Today, with thousands of dedicated colleagues reaching out to customers around the world Zoetis brings a singular focus on animal health to the quality products, services, and solutions it offers veterinarians and livestock farmers Because the world depends on animals Those who care for them can depend on us. We're Zoetis. For animals. For health. For you. Today, with thousands of dedicated colleagues reaching out to customers around the world, Zoetis brings a singular focus on animal health to the quality products, services, and solutions it offers veterinarians and livestock farmers. Because the world depends on animals, those who care for them can depend on us. We're Zoetis. For animals. For health. For you. For you. 